Hello guys, and welcome to this installment of A Computers and Technology. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at two absolutely gorgeous IBM ThinkPad T60s I bought off eBay for 10 bucks a piece, plus shipping. If you want to check out the seller that I got these from, the link to the seller will be down in the description. I guess you could also call these Lenovo ThinkPad T60s. I'm not really sure which one I'm gonna go with throughout the video. Um, and I believe these were the last systems that IBM had a hand in designing. I could be wrong about that. Um, so all my fact checkers out there, go ahead and verify that and let me know in the comment section. I'm pretty sure I am right about that though. Um, today I'm gonna be taking a brief look at both these laptops because I do have plans for both of these computers in the near future. Uh, there are gonna be one or two upgrade videos coming up very, very soon. And I'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of this video. So I'm 100% sure that the one on my left is functional. I actually grabbed a live installation of Ubuntu 16.04, plugged it into the system, booted it up, and I've actually just been using it for school for the past week, and it's taken everything I've thrown at it. I'm really happy with the system quality and performance from this laptop right here. Now, the one on my right, I'm not really sure if it's working because I have not tried to turn it on yet. I want to save that for this video, uh, and we're about to uh, see if this system actually powers on. But first, I want to give you guys a closer look around both of these laptops. Check these bad boys out. Both these laptops are in beautiful condition. I was really surprised because um, these were advertised for parts slash not working, but structurally they are 100% intact. And I know for a fact that the one over here on the left is functional because I've been using it for the past week. Now the keyboards uh, are in good condition. As you can see, I've gone and cleaned this one up since I have been using it. And really, there's not too much wear. You can see a couple shiny places here and there uh, indicating that, you know, the, the keyboard has been used, but it's definitely still usable and it definitely still has a lot of life left in it. Uh, this one, you know, not as much. You can see a little bit more wear is evident on this system's keyboard. And also, I haven't cleaned it up yet, um, so it is a little bit dirty. Um, I, you know what, I just want to power the system on since I have it right in front of me and see if it actually works and then we'll take a closer look at both of these uh, soon after. So let's go ahead and hit the power button. There should be a little bit of charge left in that battery. I did try to charge it up. Okay, so it looks like we, oh man. All right, so this system does work and as you saw in the last clip, I was trying to get into the BIOS, but I absolutely failed. You can see the stock configuration of both of the systems. I actually upgraded this one though. Uh, I threw three gigabytes of DDR2 RAM into this T60. This one still has the standard 512 megabytes of DDR2 inside. I will also be upgrading this one to three gigabytes as well. That's the max RAM uh, each of these T60s can take. Yes, it has two RAM slots. Um, so you could throw uh, four gigabytes of RAM into the system, but it's not going to use all that due to a chipset limitation. Um, so we have a Core Duo inside running at 1.66 gigahertz. That's the T2300. I ordered two T7200s off eBay for $2.50 each, and I plan on throwing, uh, or I plan on upgrading both of these systems with those processors. As you can see, the screen for this system is in good condition. Condition. Actually, it might be in better condition than this one. Um, for some reason, there's a piece of hair stuck under this screen, and I'll show you guys uh, in just a second, and it's really annoying because my eyes tend to gravitate towards it, and it just, you know, it doesn't obstruct anything, but it does get on my uh, nerves every once in a while. So now that we know that this laptop is indeed functional, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the condition of both of these systems. I'll try to make this quick because it's probably gonna get boring real fast, uh, but as you can see, the trackpads are in good condition, very little wear on the trackpads. The buttons still feel great. Um, both of these are equipped with a fingerprint scanner. I'm not sure if that works yet because I'm not sure how to get that working under Ubuntu, especially the uh, live version of Ubuntu. As far as the hinges are concerned, this one, um, the hinges were a bit stiff. It was really hard to open and close the lid at first. I put some 3-in-1 uh, in there and kind of just opened and closed it to uh, get the 3-in-1 to seep in and now the hinges work just fine. Uh, the hinges on this one are a lot better. Uh, smooth from the beginning. They still feel great and I didn't have to do anything um, to get the laptop lid to actually open and close properly. So I'm gonna close this and the tops on these things are crazy sturdy, I believe. Um, God, what, what are these made out of? They had some marketing thing. I think I think um, these are magnesium alloy or something like that. Uh, basically they're metal and it feels really, really, really tough. It makes these laptops feel super rugged. So we'll take a look at some of the I.O. ports on this one. Of course, this one's gonna uh, have the exact same configuration. So we have VGA out right here. Come on camera, focus. 
Yay, the camera finally decided to focus. So you can see a VGA out right here, phone modem, ethernet, audio in, audio out, USB 2.0 port right here. We have some card slots. Can I lift that up and give you guys a closer look inside there? And I'll move it over to the front. There's nothing much on the front. Uh, it's in good condition, as you can see, uh, but the only thing here is the hinge release. So if we push this back, we can go ahead and open up the laptop. I will move it over to the right side. You can see the space where the hard drive caddy would usually go. Once again, that is on its way as we speak. And I'm trying to slow down a little bit because I noticed I'm talking a little bit too fast now. And I know that's going to get to some of you guys. So I'll try to slow down from here on out. Uh, we have a DVD-ROM drive right here, which can be easily removed. I've actually um, seen some adapters on eBay uh, that allow you to throw a hard drive in this area. I'm, I actually prefer the uh, DVD-ROM drive slash CD-ROM drive uh, over a hard drive because, you know, that's just something that I like to have in a system. We have two USB 2.0 ports right here. It uh, looks like a lock slot. And then on the back, um, you can see our power in. Uh, there's just an exhaust port right here. You can see some uh, LED indication lights on the uh, rear of the top and then our extended uh, generic battery. If I flip this thing over, there is a Windows XP code, uh, Windows XP code that I you know, don't need. So if you guys can actually see that, I think that's in focus. Go ahead and take it off my hands because I'm never ever gonna actually use that. And the other laptop is in nearly equally good condition. No major damage to this system. It looks great. I'm just gonna move it around real quick so you guys can get a 360 degree view. There is one small issue with this system and I'll go ahead and show you guys that. Actually, I have to open the lid, so give me a second. Okay, so as you can see, there's a latch right here but not a latch over here. This latch has broken off, but that's nothing a little Velcro won't fix. And that's really the only difference between uh, this system's condition and you know this system's condition. They're pretty much um, identically, I don't know, pristine, I guess you would say. And there we are, the system is up and running. Now I'm running Ubuntu 16.04 32-bit edition off this Adata SP550 solid state drive inside this Orico USB drive enclosure. And please keep in mind we are limited to USB 2.0 speeds, but regardless, the system is still pretty snappy. I cannot wait to actually hook up a solid state drive to the SATA connection within the system, but I can't do so until those drive cages arrive. Uh, you can see just sitting idle, we're using about a gig of RAM. CPU usage is sitting pretty darn low. Um, now taking a look at the panel, you can see I have it maxed out as far as brightness is concerned. Let me go ahead and jump into the power settings real quick so you can see the screen brightness. And by the way, um, this was one of the lower end models. So it had the integrated Intel GMA 950 graphics along with the 1024 by 768 TFT LCD. But you know, surprisingly, it hasn't been that Bad. I thought the resolution might be a little bit too low, but I've been using it for school for the past week and I haven't really had any issues with it. Now, I did say earlier that there was a piece of hair stuck under the screen and it's right there. And it's, you know, it, it's towards the bottom, which is nice. I haven't actually tried to get it out yet. I'm gonna buy a uh, can of compressed air and see if I can, you know, somehow blow it out. Uh, there's also a little speck right there. I think that's a dead bug and I'm not really sure how in the world those things got in, but if they got in, I'm sure there's a way to get them out. Now, besides those two small annoyances, the screen is in good condition. I'm just gonna start popping open some applications so you guys can get a general idea of system performance as I usually do. And I'm also gonna throw some music in so it isn't as boring. Uh, there we go, so we have LibreOffice open. It's kind of awkward because the uh, laptop is sitting at a 45 degree angle to me so I can properly record the screen, but I'll just type in the good old generic phrase, hello. YouTube and we will manipulate the text. Oh man, that keyboard just feels awesome. I love the way the keyboard uh, feels. You know, it just makes me want to type or make it bold, italicize it, underlining, and hey, let's strike through. There we go. Um, so I'll just keep this application open. We'll uh, try to get into some multitasking here. So I'll just open up LibreOffice Impress as well. So there's Impress, we'll just click on this box and try to drag it around. And that's nice and smooth. Pretty decent performance from these uh, GMA 950 graphics. I have a lot of machines in the back with uh, GMA 950. And, you know, all of them I've been, you know, the graphics have been absolutely fine. Um, but anyway, I have a uh, LibreOffice Calc open. So I'll just try to type something in there. Hello again. And I didn't realize I had 
caps lock on. Um, so that's working just fine. We have three applications open right now. Multitasking is working out just fine. What else can I open here? Let's open up an instance of the file manager, uh, instance of the settings, and the animations are nice and smooth as well. Drag that around here and there's no noticeable lag. Um, the sidebar uh, on Unity pops out just fine. If I click on here, we can go and search through our app. Look, oh, come on. I need to turn the sensitivity down. That's fine. Terminal. There we go. And you know what? I just noticed there's a little, 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 little tiny imperfection on the screen right here. Can you guys see that? It's like a little bright dot. Um, but that's not really noticeable from my perspective. I don't care too much about it. So we have a bunch of applications open right now. Let's go ahead and pop open Firefox. Someone asked me in the last video why I uh, left all the applications open and did web browsing at the same time. Well, that's really a real world scenario. When you're, you know, when you're writing a paper or something, you don't just close your document writer you, to do research. You leave your um, document open and open up a web browser at the same time. That's multitasking. We're demonstrating multitasking here. Now, so I'm gonna navigate to my website, www.aacomputersandtechnology.com. You guys can see I already tried to navigate to it and it loads up nice and smooth, nice and fast. And let's just scroll through here. Oh, the site's still loading. And I think we are about done. There we go. So now that the site's actually loaded, you can see scrolling is nice and smooth. And I'll just uh, click on one of these YouTube videos right here. And I believe audio should be working. I'm going to crank that up. There we go. Oops. Hello guys and welcome to another install of A Computers and Technology. I am really excited for today. I have an awesome project coming up for you guys. All the solar equipment has just been sitting across my room. Okay, let's pop open a couple of our sites now. We'll navigate to my archive site, acatarchives.com, and that loaded up just fine. Let's try something else. Let's navigate through the associated press through Google. So Pop open the Associated Press and just scroll through there. That's not the actual news page. I thought that was the actual news page, but still serves its purpose just fine. Oh, that came out weird. And last but not least, let's hit our favorite website, www.cnn.com. And I said favorite website because I always use this to uh, test out these systems web browsing capabilities because the CNN's just full of like scripts and ads and it's really, really resource intensive. And I've said this a lot, but my, you know, main gaming rig even struggles with CNN sometimes. It, it's, it's ridiculous, you know, and they have made their website a little bit better. The old website used to be god awful. Uh, I just couldn't do anything on the old site. Uh, that's why I moved over to the uh, Associated Press, which is probably a better source of uh, information anyway. Whoa, I did not mean to click on that, but I guess, uh, I guess we'll do it anyway. Oh, it's a, oh great, it's a Trump article. And we will scroll down here. Scrolling is nice and smooth for the most part, considering that this is CNN. Um, so I'm done with that. We will close out of here. And we'll try something else. And for one final demo, I'm gonna open up Firefox and web browser one last time with Nova applications open in the background. So that's loaded up and I will go to my bookmarks because I went ahead and bookmarked my page on YouTube and we'll just try playing back a video in full screen mode. So this one's gonna start playing automatically. Pause that, uh, maximize it. It should be set to 480 and ready to go. So let's just hit play. So 480p video playback is nice and smooth. We're getting a consistent 30 frames per second. Let's bump it up to 720p at uh, 60 FPS. And I don't think it's gonna fare too well here uh, just because of the frame rate. I might try a different video that doesn't have uh, a frame rate of 60 frames per second. So you can see that 720p at 60 FPS is playing, um, but the video is actually falling behind the audio. So let me try a different video now. Oh my gosh, what, what, what? I forgot what camera I filmed with back there. I think it was the Kodak uh, Easy i8 or something like that. Um, yeah, but 720p video playback at 30 FPS is watchable, but it is a tad bit jumpy. And yeah, 1080p video is just not gonna happen with this system, which, you know, really isn't a big deal. This is a school system and I'm not gonna need to play back 1080p video. 
And Windows might be able to get a little bit more performance out of the video playback. Um, I'll try that out when I actually install Windows and uh, I'll let you guys know because we'll have a video all about it. Now I'm gonna talk about what exactly I plan to do with these. So this one's going to become my school laptop already through three gigs of RAM in it. Gonna put a 120 gigabyte of data SSD inside it. Uh, and then of course I'm gonna perform the uh, 7200 processor upgrade and call it a day. This one will be good to go. Now with this one, I need a little bit of help from you guys. So I talked about this in my previous garage sale find video. Um, there's this kid that I volunteer with in my sister's marching band. Uh, he plans on uh, becoming a computer science major, but he doesn't actually have a laptop, which is crazy to me. Um, so I wanted to hook him up and I think this would make the perfect laptop for him. These things are super rugged. It's portable um, battery life with that aftermarket battery, which I have in this now is about three and a half hours. So that's, you know, just fine for schoolwork. When you're on campus, usually there's an outlet or two around. Um, but I do need a little bit of funding from you guys. And I know that's going to make some of you angry. I'm, I'm sorry if it does. Uh, but I would, you know, like at least $50 in viewer funding. I'm going to put a PayPal link down in the description. I'll remove the link when I raise uh, the money that I want to. But I need 50 bucks for RAM um, and, of course, the solid state drive to go along with that. And if I can raise enough, I would like to get them an activated version of Windows because both of these are going to be running Ubuntu 16.04 and Windows 10 uh, or 7 in a dual boot configuration. Haven't really decided if I want to use 10 or 7 yet. Uh, not really sure about that at this moment, uh, but I would like it to be an activated version of Windows. So I would have to reach a goal of around 100 um, and I want to say 160 bucks. I'll do the calculations and put the actual amount down in the description. Uh, but I would need probably about 160 bucks uh, to get a proper Windows license along with all the parts. And that just seems like too much money to me. So I might just, uh, I might just leave that uh, version of Windows unactivated because as of now, you can use unactivated windows as long as you want. You just can't make some customizations to it, which you know, really isn't a big deal. So if you want to help me help him, the PayPal link will be down below. So I want to make sure this actually happens. So that's why I'm asking for some uh, viewer uh, funding help. So that's gonna be about it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll post some HD images of these machines machines up on my website. The link for that will be down below. And also don't forget to check out the, uh, what is the, the month October giveaway. Uh, the link to that will be down in the description as well. If you want to support me, you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate links. You can also support me by checking out my Patreon. And of course, please don't forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. Thanks for watching guys. And I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.